everyone, and welcome to the Global War Watch Network. So listen to this. India is about to build one of the most powerful rocket engines on Earth, and Russia just opened the door. It's a massive deal. And today, we're going to break down exactly how this partnership could completely change the game for India's ambitions in space. But hey, before we jump in, if you enjoy these kinds of explainers, do us a quick favor and hit that subscribe button. It really does help us keep making more of them for you. All right, so to really get why this engine deal is such a game changer, we first need to talk about India's big problem, its heavy lift challenge. You see, their ambition is sky high, but they've been running up against a pretty serious obstacle. I mean, look, India isn't just launching small satellites anymore. We're talking about huge goals here. They've got the Gaganyaan program to put astronauts in space. They're planning more missions to the moon, maybe even Mars. Plus, they need to launch these massive, heavy communication satellites. And all of that, every single one of those missions requires one critical thing. Raw power. The power to lift really heavy stuff into orbit. That's the key to true space independence. So the rocket that's supposed to do all this heavy lifting is the LVM-3. It's India's biggest, most powerful rocket right now. And don't get me wrong, it's a total workhorse, super reliable, but it has a limit. And that limit is fast becoming a major bottleneck for all those big dreams we just talked about. And here's the number that really matters, 4.2 tons. That's the maximum weight the LVM-3 can carry up to what's called geostationary transfer orbit. You can think of that as the main highway to space for big satellites. Now, 4.2 tons sounds like a lot, and it is, but for the next generation of satellites and those really complex missions to other planets, it's just not enough. That number right there is the wall they've hit. Okay, so there's the problem. But now, here comes the solution. And it's coming from a partner India has worked with for decades. Russia has put a powerhouse of an engine on the table, a piece of proven, reliable technology that could absolutely shatter that 4.2-ton limit. So what kind of engine are we talking about here? It's called a semi-cryogenic engine. Now, without getting too technical, a fully cryogenic engine uses super duper cold fuels like liquid hydrogen. This one is a bit different. It uses liquid oxygen, which is still very cold, but pairs it with a special kind of room temperature kerosene. The takeaway? It's a combination that's incredibly powerful, but also a lot more robust and easier to handle. Okay. Let's put this power difference in perspective, because this is where it gets crazy. India's current main engine, the Vikas engine, puts out about 80 tons of thrust. The Russian RD-191M, it delivers around 200 tons. Yeah, that's not just a little step up, it's a massive leap. We're talking more than double the power, just like that. And this thing is just packed with cool features. It's super efficient, yeah, but the real game changer, it can throttle. That means it can actually adjust its power up and down in the middle of a flight. That's absolutely crucial for tricky maneuvers. And get this, it's a key technology you need for reusable rockets. And maybe the best part of all, it's not some new unproven design. It's already flown on Russian rockets, which means way, way less risk for India. All right, so let's get into the deal itself, because this is where you realize this is so much more than just India buying an engine off the shelf. This is about fundamentally upgrading their entire space program and hitting the accelerator on all those big plans. So what's the bottom line? What does this actually do? Well, you take the LVM-3 rocket, you swap out its main stage for one powered by this new Russian engine, and bam, your payload capacity jumps from 4.2 tons all the way up to around 7 tons. That's a huge increase. Suddenly, a whole new category of heavier, more complex missions is now on the table. And this, this right here, is probably the most important part of the entire agreement. It's a 100% transfer of technology. Let that sink in. India isn't just buying a bunch of engines. They're getting the blueprints. They're getting the instruction manual. They're getting the know-how to build these incredible engines themselves in India. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, isn't India already working on its own big engine, the SE-2000? And you'd be right. But think of this deal as a strategic shortcut. It's a brilliant move, really. It lets India get this heavy lift power way faster than if they waited for their own engine. Plus, they can learn from the Russian design to speed up their own development. It's like taking two roads to the same destination to make sure you get there. Of course, a deal like this isn't just about nuts and bolts and rocket fuel. It's also about geopolitics. This partnership is reaching a new level, and it shows a kind of trust between nations that is frankly pretty rare, especially when it comes to this kind of high-tech stuff. 
And look, this isn't something that came out of nowhere. This relationship has deep roots. We're talking decades of cooperation. Russia launched India's very first satellite, Aryabhata, way back in 1975. They took the first Indian astronaut to space. They're even training India's Gaganyaan astronauts right now. This deal is just the latest chapter in a very long story. And if you want to know just how special this level of trust is, just compare it to something like jet engines. In most defense deals, when a country sells jet engines, they never give away the secrets to the core technology. That's the secret sauce. But here, with this rocket engine, Russia is handing over the whole recipe book. That tells you everything you need to know about this strategic relationship. So what does this all mean? It means India is joining a very, very exclusive club. Seriously, you can count the number of countries that can build these kinds of powerful engines on one hand. Russia, the U.S., China, and now India. This move puts them squarely in the top tier of spacefaring nations. Okay, so this all sounds great, but when does it actually happen? How do you go from a signed piece of paper to a real, fire-breathing rocket engine? Well, let's take a look at the roadmap. The plan is pretty straightforward, though definitely ambitious. The final agreement gets signed this year. Then, for the next couple of years, the really complex work of transferring all that knowledge begins. And the big goal? To have the very first fully Indian-made version of this engine ready to go by 2030. And the long-term vision here is much bigger than just one rocket. This is all part of India's Make in India plan to build up its own high-tech industry. With this power, they can compete for a bigger slice of the global satellite launch business. And who knows? Down the road, India could even become a country that exports these kinds of powerful engines. So you see, this deal really isn't the end of the story. It's the start of a whole new one. It gives India the muscle it needs for a new era of space exploration. So the real question we're left with is, with all this new power, just how far will India's ambitions reach? And that's our explainer for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this interesting, we'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, share it with a friend, and subscribe to the Global Warwatch Network. And hey, let us know what you think in the comments below. We're always curious to hear your take. All the links to our social media are in the description, so you can join the conversation there too. We'll catch you on the next one.